Hey everyone, I'm Carly. I'm a cross stitcher, a knitter, and a natural dyer, and this is my floss tube. Today I have some uh, of the usual suspects on the agenda, whips, starts, FFOs, as well as some former and family finishes, which is when I show uh, things that I've made in the past and things my family members have made in the past. So to start us off, I will show you a piece that you have seen if you've watched um, former videos of mine. Um, this is uh, an FFO using a motif from a pattern called Forest at Night by Stitchy Princess. She is on Etsy. I'm not sure if that pattern is still available on her Etsy, but she's got plenty of similar ones with like similar moons and a lot of other really cool stuff up there too. Uh, but what I did was take that original motif and then adjust it so the eyes are closed or the eyes are open and it's just a little moon falling asleep <laughs> as we move down the rectangle. This is stitched on 14 count uh, black Ada from Witchell and the DMC uh, floss is actually glow in the dark which is super fun. So I mounted this on just some board my dad and I found in his garage. Um, he very kindly cut it to size and spray painted it for me. Uh, so I'm calling this a collaborative piece between me and my dad rather than my dad did all the work <laughs> in terms of getting the board ready. Uh, then what I did was tack it to the board, um, just like lightly hammered and then push these, uh, na not nails down. These are the pins I actually use to pin my pieces on foam board um, and I just use them for this because this board is thin enough. Um, you may notice that this is not centered. Uh, I could say it's intentional. It wasn't. I'm just not very careful with <laughs> measuring things like that. So what I've decided is I'm considering this a fully finished object, but um, I may have one of my sort of artsy, more like handwriting inclined friends put a nice little phrase about the moon on here. We'll see. For now, it's finished. I might, you know, put something on the back to hang it on the wall, um, but right now it just leans on my shelf and I think it looks really good like that. So there she is again. My next finish is a uh, piece that I actually started and finished in the same month, um, actually almost within the same week, not to brag, um, but it's a piece I never intended to stitch. It comes from this uh, book, uh, Prairie Schooler STU. And this is why I bought this book. Can you guess why? <laughs> Based on what I just showed you. Um, so I got it for the letter T, uh, which I've not stitched yet, but I have a lot of plans for that piece. And then I also really liked S because I love um, cross stitch patterns that depict different crafts. Like I've shared, I love cross stitch patterns that have quilting in them, even though I myself am not a quilter, um, but I just thought that was cool. And then this is U for unlock, and I didn't dislike it. I just didn't think I'd ever stitch it until. Um, <laughs> so last month I finished, um, was it last month? I don't know. It was recently. It was Farmer's Market by Told in a Garden, and I stitched that on 36 count fabric, um, which is the highest count that I'm comfortable stitching right now. And it, there were a lot of color changes, a lot of detail, and it was really fun, but I just, my brain wanted something completely different from that. I remember there was one night I was like going through all of my patterns and being like, I just want to block stitch something. I just need something with like a chunk of color. And, um, and there she was. It's just ready for me. So uh, I went ahead and stitched her up and here she is. And she is stitched on 32 count Lugana from Fortnite Fabric. The colorway is Ruth from their uh, subtle, subtle sampler fabric of the month club. And you can see it's kind of got like a little bit of a chalkboard look, I think. Um, like the fabric is showing through um, because it's one over two. And it's called for stitching two over two, but I just, I just could, my brain was like, no, we want the most simple thing possible. <laughs> uh, so we're not going to bother with multiple threads, um, which is fine. I kind of like that sort of chalkboardy look for this one. Um, my one re regret or lesson I learned uh, is that that can really um, alter the effects of, of some of the some of the stitches. So what I mean, uh, there are two different reds in this piece. And actually they were the same two reds that were in 
uh, farmer's market on, uh, there's a barn in there. And I remember being like, oh, like maybe the dye lots have changed for DMC since the 80s when that pattern came out uh, because it was really hard to differentiate. And I stitched that one one over two as well. So I did it here and was, it's the same, same reds and um, it's not the reds, it's the coverage. So there's like some lines in this umbrella. There's some like supposed to be some depth in this padlock. Uh, but because the coverage is light, you can't really tell. Um, and I don't mind. Um, it was just an interesting lesson to learn. So, um, but this one was super fun and I, I have a home for it, which I'm really excited about. I love when I can stitch something and know who it's going to or who I'm going to offer it to because I'll keep all my pieces um, if nobody wants them. Uh, but when people are excited to have your work in their home, um, I think that's really cool. So this is going to my friend Terthna and there's a lot of reasons for this. So um, I used to work with Terthna uh, on her desk. She had a, a uh, it wasn't a cross stitch piece. Um, I'm not sure what kind of needle work it was. It wasn't punch needle, but a friend had made it for her and it had a big red umbrella on it and some song lyrics from a artist who had come to their college uh, <laughs> when, when that piece was stitched. Um, and so I was stitching this and I had already made, um, like I had everything ready to go and I was, I was just going to do it and I wasn't really thinking about it. And then I stitched this umbrella and I was like, <gasps> Terthna. Um, so I was just having fun thinking about her while I was doing this. And then I started stitching the keys and I was like, Terthna's moving this month. Um, this is kind of like, and this is like going to your new home to unlock the door. So, or that's what it made me think of. So I was like, maybe I'll just offer this to Terthna to see if she wants it. Um, and then as I was putting in the last stitches or what I thought were the last stitches, cause I forgot her shoes. Um, the song that was on the piece she had in uh, in the office on her desk came on the radio and I had never heard it before, but I recognized the lyrics and I was like, no freaking way. This is just too much of a coincidence. Uh, so I shared that information with Terthna and also was like, absolutely no pressure. If this is not part of the decor that you want, don't worry, like I won't be offended. Um, but also just so you know, all these things happened and she said she really likes it and I get to see her in a couple weeks. So I'm going to bring this to her and it'll be a homewarming, housewarming gift, as well as a thank you for being my friend, not only when we work together, but also during the pandemic. She has been an amazing friend um, for many years, but also particularly over the past 18 months. Um, so... I'm, I'm excited to give her a token of my appreciation um, that has been received with uh, a lot of enthusiasm. And um, yeah, she's, she's excited about it. So I'm excited about it. And I'm glad I get to like show her uh, in, you know, other than texting, thank you for being my friend, um, which has its place, but this is a tangible uh, depiction of, of my, my care and affection for her. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, here it is. I'm so pleased with how this one turned out. Um, and that was a really fun surprise, just starting it without planning to and seeing seeing what happened. So I have as well a little baby finish. I was almost done with this one the last time I showed you. But now she's done. This is Litha from The Primitive Hair. It's a free pattern on her, whoops, on her blog. Um, she has a whole... Um, wheel of the year series up there that's free and then she has a ton of wheel of the year patterns that are not free but one day I may purchase um, but for now we're sticking with the freebies this is stitched on 28 count Charles Craft Linen from Michaels um, I believe it's called like tea dyed or something like that um, and it's growing on me I did not care for this fabric initially but I'm getting used to it it's stitched one over one using the called for DMC and I've shared with like this series um this has been a depiction of my growth as a stitcher. Um, I stitched on 18 count Ada for like two years before coming to any other kind of fabric. And I only stitched like text pretty much. I was just doing like song lyrics and quotes and like some borders. Um, so I still consider myself like a newer or like beginner stitcher. Um, I, I say like I started stitching in like 20... 21 or like the end of 2020 even though it had been like a couple years before because I am exploring these other things now um so this one I am most proud of um I 
I was able to stick closest to the pattern. I was, I understood the lighting I needed in order to, to make it an easier process for myself. And it's also just freaking cute. Like, look at this little bee. Ugh, oh, I love it so much. And the colors just, mm, wow. really, really pleased with this one. I've got three more left in the series. Uh, and then, um, I have some ideas for how I'm going to FFO it, uh, but uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what ends up happening. Okay, I think those are all the finished pieces. I will show you my whips now. So the uh, one that I have put work into most recently is the Linen and Threads Mystery Sampler Stitch Along 2021 Talavera, or as I just call it, my Talavera Sampler Sal. So I'll show you the block I finished. This is the June block. I'm really excited about this one. There's a lot more colors in here than the previous month. Um, it's a monochromatic uh, pattern, but I, um, I, you can choose your colors. So what I usually do is like wait for other people to um, post how they've decided to arrange their colors. And then I, using the color palette I've selected, draw inspiration from that. Um, so this is it. And then this is the whole piece. This is stitched on 36 count platinum by Picture This Plus. And I, I can't get over this column. It looks so cool. <laughs> um, so I do have to finish this column. I'm not pushing myself to finish that within, you know, a particular time frame. But July's uh, piece pattern came out and it's just filling in these, like, the, the spaces underneath the tiles. Um, so one thing that I might change about this piece... Um, I might have to change a lot actually because as I shared last time I cut this too short so we will see what what ends up at the bottom and if I can actually have room to stitch it but something else I might change is uh May June May's May's block um I was a little like underwhelmed with the color uh choices I made. Um, so what I've seen is people have actually stitched this little top nugget right here in this this motif um, a different color from the rest of the I feel like this thing has a name I don't know what it's called but this little doodad um, so it's only 10 stitches on each of them so I might unstitch those and then like swap out like alternate like put the yellow and then the orange and yellow and or, or red I don't know um, we'll see what happens with that that's just something I'm thinking about because as you can see the rest of these blocks are like pow color um, and that one's just kind of like <laughs> so we'll see we'll see what happens with that one but uh, I'm I'm I finished that uh, June block kind of like at the last minute so I am procrastinating more and more with this piece and uh, yeah hopefully I finish it before the end of the year that's that's my goal then I have an update on my Welsh dresser by Galliana cross stitch I'm using uh, floss by amaranthine stitches both of them are on Etsy and uh, this is it. Ta-da! Yay! So I finished stitching the entire dresser itself, and now I'm just filling in the items on the shelves. Um, I purchased a multi-pack of like various kind of gray-toned uh, floss from Amaranthine, and um, that's not her like name, but that's her brand. Uh, and I took the first, um, like the darkest of the gray and stitched kind of like randomly placed items. Um, and now I'm going back with like the next lightest gray and putting that in randomly. Uh, and then there's, I'll probably need to use one more um, skein or like a very small portion of that skein. And it's kind of more like a cream. Um, so that'll, that'll probably be like maybe one or two motifs. Um, but I just think the variegation in here is bananas. It is so beautiful. I don't know what you can see right now, but yeah, I am loving this piece. Um, I haven't stitched on it for a little while, but, um, I had a, a week, um, vacation recently and it was raining a few days, but, um, I just, I ended up just stitching on this the whole time, which was really, really fun. So this is stitched on 18 count antique white Ada from Zweigart. Um, and it's stitched on two over, two over one. 
um, is my coverage there. So last I have a start, which I guess is now technically a whip because of how, how much I've worked on it. Um, just put this away. Doo -doo. Uh, this is another like surprise start that I had. Um, I hadn't, I have some like brands or, or designers that I would love to stitch um, eventually. And uh, so they're kind of on my list, but uh, I wasn't planning to start this one until like January of next year. It was going to be like a new year, new start kind of thing. Um, but I, on my vacation, I went to a local needle, local needlework shop called uh, Bat and Kill Stitchery. It's in Sunderland, Vermont. And um, it was my first time at an LNS. So I was a little overwhelmed, um, but I saw she had a basket of like $10 mirabilias. So I was like, we're going to do this today. Mirabili is one of the, um, the designers I want to stitch. Um, I am not really like none of her, how do I say this? Um, this will probably be the only Mirabilia I stitch. I want to say that I stitched a Mirabilia, but I'm not really like a mermaid stitcher or like a fancy lady dress stitcher. Um, currently maybe one day I will be, but those aren't really the patterns that call to me. Um, but like, I want to stitch a mirror. I want to stitch a Chatelaine. I want to stitch a kit from Owl Forest. Um, there's just like ones I want to try. Um, and this was one of them. So this is the pattern that's been on my list for a long time. Um, and again, 10 bucks um, compared to like, I think it's like 13 or something on 123 Stitch and more expensive in other places. So as a as someone who's on a budget, it was really nice to see like, oh, great. Like I can get this thing that I want for less money than what I was expecting to spend on it. So she also had the fabric available, which is a 32 count linen. The color is natural and it's from Wichelt. And it doesn't look like, oh, let me show you the pattern first. So you have an idea of what you're actually looking at. <laughs> it's winter in my garden. So it's just this lady chilling in her greenhouse, <clears throat> getting things ready for next year. And there's some beading in it, so I don't know if I'll do that, but we'll see when the time comes. And this is my start. <laughs> Just her little skirt right now, um, or her big skirt, I guess. Uh, but this has been really, really fun. And that's kind of why I was drawn to this piece was because, like, the skirt was so chunky. Um, I just was imagining, like, how therapeutic it would be to stitch that guy. And it has been. I have loved stitching that. Um, I stitch in hand, so I think that might be why it is more like relaxing to me than it might be on a cue snap or something like that. Um, but stitching on Wichelt is new for me. I know I had that Ada, um, but this is like Wichelt linen. Um, and it's very thick compared to other um, linens I've stitched on or other fabrics in general that I've stitched on. Um, it's kind of stiff, um, less stiff than when I first took it out of the package, but I think I'm probably going to stick with Zweigart bases from now on. Um, this has been like, I've had to figure out how to um, hold it in a way that doesn't hurt my hands because having too much fabric in my hand when I'm holding hurts. Um, and yeah, it's just been, it's just been a different experience. Um, it's kind of nice because it like holds its shape kind of like a stiff Ada um, and the, the holes are really easy to see. But in terms of like, how it feels in my hand when I'm stitching. Um, it's not terrible, it's just different. Um, and I think I, I prefer like a different kind of fabric. So um, just learning new things every day. That's why I love stitching, even though I like have been doing it for so long. Um, I learn something new with every piece and that's a gift. <laughs> okay. Dang, is that everything? Okay, great. Uh, well, those are all my, my cross-stitch pieces. That was so fast. Um, so I will show you my former and family finishes. I have not really thought about how I'm going to show these on camera um, as they are blankets, uh, but we'll see what happens. So this first one is a... I've said in the past, like, I haven't made a quilt quilt, and by that I mean, like, sewing pieces of fabric together. Um, this is the closest I've ever come to making a quilt. I, I sewed a bun knit a bunch of squares, and then sewed them together. So I guess, technically, it's a quilt. It's a blanket. Um, that cannot be disputed. Uh, but I made it using a bunch of sock yarn that I had collected over the years, or that my mom had. 
I made this in college um, my senior year. So this is like from, this is, it's, it's a few years old. <laughs> um, but yeah, I love looking at it and remembering like, this is from the first uh, sock, pair of socks I ever knit. Um, this is from some hand warmers my mom had made. Um, this is a pair of socks I made for um, a, like a teacher I had. Um, this is from like, I, I like think like this I picked up in, in um, Arizona when I was traveling there with my family. Um, this is from Vermont. So I just, that's what I love. Like the concept of quilting is overwhelming to me in terms of like the technical part, but I just love the idea of having a a thing that you've made where the fabric has meaning and I know that's not like how all quilts are made like sometimes it's like I like this pattern and I like these these fabrics so I'm just going to make it but like the way that um I believe it's Catherine from Knit Neat and Not by the Sea um she is like a freehand quilter she just kind of like does it higgledy piggledy and it's super cool because she has these like very interesting um results but my favorite part of the way that she she quilts um is when she's showing you her block or like the piece part of it that she's made she's like and this is from um like a nightgown that I made for my daughter out of a bed sheet that I used um for curtains that I made like she, every little piece of fabric has a story and I just love that so so much so if I ever do end up making a quilt I mean, I would have to start like <laughs> assessing the fabric I have, um, but I, I really think that for me, a, a quilt with with meaning is is something that um, I would like to make. So this is the closest I've come to that, and it's kind of like a little lap blanket. Um, I gave it to my mom. Um, I believe the pattern for the square is um, I found it on Ravelry when I use that website more. Um, and then I just sewed them together so they they like make an X in the middle. Um, but yeah, I, 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 this was a project my like senior year of college, like the last semester probably. Um, I just remember like making a ton of these while watching Orphan Black and like arranging them on the floor in the apartment and, um, just having a lot of fun with the arranging process. So, uh, and my mom has, has really, really loved it. Um, I'm glad she let me borrow it for, for this. Um, but she has like gone from like wanting to display it to like actually using it as a little lap blanket. So, um, all of these are, I think, wool based, uh, sock yarn, uh, except for like this one, it's like sparkly. I don't know what that's made out of, but yeah. So it's very cozy, very warm. It's, it's, it's great for like while I was stitching and having it on my lap. It was, it was so nice. Um, and then family finish is also a blanket that my mom made for me. <laughs> so she made this for me uh, when I was in high school. And let's see. How am I going to do this? Oh, okay. <laughs> She's a big girl. This was made when I had a twin bed. So... just so you get an idea of the colors. This was made uh, with Noro, oops, <laughs> let me get in frame here. This is made with Noro yarn, which is a um, Japanese yarn company and um, it's wool and it's beautiful and they have all these colors. So each of these blocks is uh, one skein of Noro. And um, I think maybe each, every other like squiggly bit, um, like this is one end of the skein and then, well, let me find a better one that depicts this. Okay. So, like, sh this is one end of the skein, and this was the other end of the skein, and then it, it like, alternates, I think. Um, either way, you can see, like, there's so many different colors in this block, and each of that was, that was, like, one skein of their, of their yarn. Um, so she made this over the course of a few years, um, and then gave it to me for, um, I can't remember. I know it was intended for my 16th birthday, but I can't remember if she was actually able to finish it by then. Um, but yeah, I, I love this so much. This has been on my bed for many, many years. And, um, yeah, I just, I think about like when I, uh, when my mom, um, is gone, um, kind of morbid but I just I take a lot of comfort when I look at this piece because I know like it'll it'll be like she's she's giving me a hug um 
she's not going anywhere anytime soon knock on wood um but this this piece just brings me a lot of comfort looking at it like knowing that as long as i have this like i'll be good um cool so i think that's everything for today um thank you so much for taking the time to watch um i hope i hope you're doing okay um and uh have have a wonderful um next few weeks until until we meet again bye